Because I got to tell you, I am so excited to introduce the one and only Deborah Bonner Unity Gospel Choir. Let's get them up here on the stage right now. Come on up, guys. Jesus, excellent, 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 excellent. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his way. This is the lady behind all of this tonight. Can we give her a huge round of applause? Deborah, the stage is yours. I'm from Flint, Michigan, and I don't know if you know the problem with Flint, the water crisis, and children are dying because there's lead in the water, and the pipes are still not fixed. And before that crisis, Flint was already in crisis because Flint was called the vehicle city. Detroit is called the motor city, but Flint was the first city that built cars. And so when the car industry went down, that was the only industry that Flint had. So there was no jobs. But for the last 40 years or so, there has not been jobs in Flint, Michigan. And when I went back just two or three years ago, it looked like a war zone boarded up houses, kids in the streets. It was very, very sad, very, very poor. Poor people and people without hope and struggling. I grew up in Flint, Michigan, and it was through gospel music. I was given hope. Um, I was a, a special ed child, and I fought every day, and I couldn't read. So when I was 13, I joined a Baptist church, Pulse Avenue Baptist Church, and those people loved me and they put their arms around me. And I learned how to read by singing the hymns. That's how I learned how to read. And that church paid for my voice lessons. They gave me voice lessons from the age of 13 until I graduated from high school with honors. Can you imagine? Because through gospel music, I came to know my Savior, know him personally, where he actually speaks to me, speaks to my mind, and he expanded my, my thinking and complex thoughts he made clear to me. And it was through singing gospel music that I came to know the Savior. I'm, I'm just going to pull somebody out. Uh, Serena, will you come? This is a little Jewish girl. What does this choir meant to you? I don't know. Uh, I was very blessed to move in a, into a house in a new neighborhood where my next door neighbor was Deborah Bonner. And so I get to be, I get to be conveniently uh, close with her and be her friend and I love it. And what has the choir done for me? Um, I feel like the choir is is another form of church for me where I can be loud and sing to the top of my lungs and express how I feel about my Savior with my body, with my voice, um, and with my whole soul. And, and she um, creates an environment for, for all of us here where we love each other, we care about each other, we're all from different backgrounds, different uh, races and cultures and even political backgrounds, and we love each other, we get along, and it's just, it's glorious. And, I'm just having so much fun. It is fun. It is fun and it's uplifting and I love it. And I'm so glad that you're all here. Thank you for coming. Tom. A couple years ago, I had the experience of going to a Baptist church in Salt Lake City and had this unbelievable experience. I, like many of us here in this room, I grew up with, it, with hymns and thought, this is what we do. This is how we do. There's more. I discovered that. And I heard this in a church, and then I heard more songs later, and I said, God, direct me to where I can be a part of a movement like this. And here I am. Thank you, Deborah Bonner. Thank you, the Bonners. I am honored to be a part of this choir. This is awesome. Enjoy the show. 
So we are building Unity Gospel Choirs all over Utah and all over the nation because I want you to have what I have. This joy that we have found in gospel music. And we want you to raise the roof. We want you to clap, if you want to clap, stand, sway, dance, however you feel as the spirit moves you as you hear this music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know he'll make a crooked train. going to back you up on Sweet Little Jesus Boy. It's a Negro spiritual, and it's my favorite Christmas song. You see, it's part of my heritage, and this is something I'm sure was sung during time of slavery, when the Savior was all that these slaves had to hold on to and to give them hope and joy. That's why I love gospel music. And that's why I want to share this gospel music with the world. Sweet little Jesus boy, they made you be born in a manger. Superstar stuff. Well, listen, and I started listening to that Sister Act 2 soundtrack. Y'all remember that one, right? Joyful, joyful, Lord. Oh, my goodness. You worked with everybody from Dolly to Celine to Boys to Men to you name it. This man's worked with them. And, and Stevie, don't forget about Stevie. Holy cow. I asked you backstage, what, who is one of your favorite artists you worked with, and who'd you say? I, I said Whitney Houston. I, I produced all of her songs for The Preacher's Wife, and then later I produced um, about half of her Christmas album, actually a little, about two thirds of her Christmas album. And it was just an honor to, I mean, I, I've been arranging all my life since I was literally a child, and it was, you know, there, there's no, there was no voice on the planet like hers. Uh, and there are many wonderful voices everywhere, but you know what I mean, that voice was just amazing. And to hear her singing my, my music was such a thrill to me and such an honor. What a blessing. And he's gonna conduct a hallelujah chorus like you've never heard of before, ladies and gentlemen. Give it up, Mervyn Warren, ladies and gentlemen. Yes.
baby. 